got some videos we're going to share with y'all this morning from VBS, just to, you know, those y'all that weren't here, so you can just share the, 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 just the energy that we drew off of these kids. And, and if you talk to anybody that's here, we're all tired and wore out, but we're just so energized. <laughs> <laughs> if you would stand with me, we're going to sing uh, three songs this morning. We're going to sing Amazing Grace. We're going to sing Because He Lives. We're going to sing Mighty to Save. And uh, I just... That amazing grace, because he lives, he's mighty to save. They fit together so good. So. Let uh, get the slides up there for y'all.
the end of that. <laughs> All right. It is wonderful to know we have that great assurance. And I just, that song right there, when I get to that last verse, just thinking about the lights of glory and, and just being there with, with my Savior, I just, I just get overwhelmed and just bubble up and I just can't help it. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so uh, we're going to sing Mighty to Save. And it's so awesome that we have such a mighty God who can save. Amen. y'all y'all this morning thank you I was just wondering you know 
It's good to see y'all. And uh, I know everybody's a little on the war outside. I know I am. I know some of you had a whole lot of stuff to catch up on this weekend, and so did we. Um, but it was a good week, really was. Amen. And uh, man, I'm hot as all get out up here. So uh, can you t turn that mic down just a little bit back here? Thank you. Huh? Um, but uh, I, I would like to thank everybody that made this thing happen. I, I'm telling you, it's. But I, I'm not going to go through names because if I get hurt, and I don't want to do that because everybody did a really good job. Um, from Tasha putting the thing, uh, you know, kind of trying to manage everybody <laughs> and the chaos, uh, to the skits, to the singing, to uh, the teaching the kids how to sing, to all the, the teachers and the helpers and the people working out on the playgrounds and, and uh, the food. And I, I will mention that real quick. Uh, I really appreciate all them ladies that work so hard down there in that uh, food. And Daryl. Daryl and Michael were the only two that would listen to what they were told down there as far as men. All the rest of us were bad. But uh, uh, I do, I, I really appreciate all the work that uh, everybody put into this. I think it was very successful. We had uh, a few people that was uh, a little anxious over their salvation, uh, didn't really make professions of faith, but we did have one profession of faith um, the very last day, and uh, yeah. So even for that one soul, every man hour, every woman hour, all the pain, all the money, it was worth that one soul, okay? And uh, uh, you need to continue to pray for those uh, that that raised their hand and didn't quite know what they were talking about. One of my granddaughters is a little concerned about some of her stuff, and she's just not quite there yet. And um, and I'm going to say something, and somebody might not like this, and I I have to live with it. Um, but I don't like twisting people up for their salvation. I really don't. I like the Holy Spirit to be the one that does the saving. That way, I don't have to do the keeping. Okay, if he saves, he'll keep, and then we can help him grow from there. And um, you know, I I just don't like twisting people. I like to to put it there and then let let God do what what he needs to do there. But anyway, we had some of that. Um, I want to pray, and then we're going to show some slides or or some videos, so some of you that didn't get to be here can enjoy some of the things that happened uh, this weekend. Yep. And I know that Abigail and her brother grew up in Bethesda Bible School, and now they're bringing their children. Right. And it's just, it's it is. And, you know, that is, honestly, that's a very good point. That is what we should, our, our goal is, is we should um, try to train the generation that God has given us, and, and we should show the love of Jesus and to introduce them to Jesus. Uh, like somebody took the time to do to us. And so that is a very good point. That is one of the things that we should do. Again, I'm going to pray, and um, and then we're going to show you all some stuff here. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you so much for this day that you've given us. And Lord, as uh, we've just been talking about, we want to thank you for all that you've done with the Vacation Bible School. There was so much work that went on for weeks and weeks prior to this. And Lord, so many people have given so much of their time, and I just pray that you bless them for that. Lord, we thank you for the profession of faith. We thank you for those that are concerned. We ask that you continue to work in their hearts. We pray that this one, that you allow us to uh, grow this one, and Lord, they might blossom into what you would have them to be for you. Father, we pray that you touch those that's not with us today. We know we have some that are sick, and we ask that you just continue to minister to them. And Father, I pray that uh, you'll help the, those that uh, are here today. 
And I pray that you'll help us to worship you in spirit and truth. Uh, Lord, I do ask that uh, you be with everything that is done in this service today. I pray that every word that is spoken, it will be pleasing to you. I pray that you'll be with the preaching here in just a little while. And Father, I do ask that you use me today to speak to your people and to help your people to walk with you. And I pray that I am one of those people as well that will walk with you. Uh, Lord, again, we just thank you for all that you're going to do here. And we ask this in the sweet name of Jesus. Amen. All right, if you would, guys, show us some videos there.
A lot of talented people in this church, and they did a really good job with all the skits and with all the music and all of that, and uh, we just can't thank them enough and can't thank God enough for giving us the people that he's given us to work with and, and willingness to, to, to work. Wayne, you want to sing, you want to let's sing maybe one song or uh, take up an offering and and, uh, and then we'll have a special music. Okay. Yeah, we'll just... Uh... We'll just do our offertory hymn now. Uh, that will be uh, page 485. Stand up for Jesus. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Please stand. I just want to ask that you uh, bring him, bring him to know you, Lord, and keep us safe today, Lord. Let us have a great message today, Lord. All things in your will. Thank you. May be seated. The Rankin is going to sing for us today. Thank you, Rankin. Appreciate you. It doesn't matter. Give me that and I have something to hold in my hand. <laughs> yeah. I love songs that talk about the blood. Because without the blood, there's no remission of sin. But I have a little pet peeve. When people talk about the blood being spilt on Calvary, if you spill something, that's an accident. He shed his blood on Calvary for me. He did it on purpose. Wasn't no accident. And because of that, I can stand redeemed. Well, 
Maybe it'll play. When I think of all my faults and my failures When I consider all the times I've let God down I am humbled by the grace He has extended I'm amazed at the mercy I have found I could never his love on my own Yet every time I come before His throne I stand redeemed By the blood of the Lamb I stand redeemed Before the great I am When He looks at me He sees the nails come I can give a broken life is all I have to offer and yet it's a priceless gift to give the bitter mark of sin will never fade away but I can come before him I the blood of the Lamb. I stand with thee before the great I am. When he looks at me, he sees the nails torn hand that bought my Now, the latest. Yeah, I'm glad that I can say that I stand redeemed today and. Before you leave here today, all right? So, all righty. I want to go back to Romans 12. And this morning, uh, as we go to Romans 12, we're going to finish the last of the three thoughts in, in verses 1 and 2. Um, uh, this is going to be the one that probably everybody in here has got questions about, and that is the will of God. Uh, what is the will of God? 
Everybody wants to know what is the will of God for me, right? Everybody. If you're a child of God, everybody wants to know what the will of God is for you, all right? Well, I'm going to try to help you with that today, all right? Um, you know, somehow or another in, in our theology and it's our bad theology, to be honest with you, but in our theology and, and in our humanness and in our brokenness, we get all worried and, oh, I don't want to miss God's will. I don't want to miss his perfect will for my life. Oh, I want to marry the right person. I want to get the right job. You know, I want, I want to pursue the right college, you know. I want to make the right investments. I want to teach my kids to be right. I mean, we, we got all of those thoughts and concerns, don't we? Help me now, folks. Help me today. Okay, I know you're tired, but just help me. All right? Talk back to me. My wife does all the time, except when I'm up here. All right? We have some real goofy... And quite frankly, we have some ungodly methods of determining God's will for our life. We really do. Let me give you some of them. The phone rang. It was 10.30 a.m. I answered it on the third ring. A company I'd been looking at, thinking I might want to work for them, was on the other end of the line. And they offered me a job. And their address was 1030, Suite 3. It has to be God's will that I take that job. All right. Lord, I've been watching this guy at work. And every day at 11 a.m., he goes and buys a 7-Up and a candy bar and takes a break. If he does it today, I know he's the one. Right? Lord, if they have that super magnum handgun, when I go to the gun store today, I know it's your will that I buy it. <laughs> right? Lord, if I can just get the financing on that new Corvette, I know it's your will that I own that. All right? Yeah. I'm going to give you one that's actually a real one. A guy and a girl, I heard a preacher tell this, so it wasn't mine. A guy and a girl that he knew for a while, they started dating real soon, and then they just immediately announced they were going to. So, well, we were just at the mall, and we just looking at rings for kicks. And I said, as the uh, store clerk put it up on the counter, if that is my size, I know he's the one. <laughs> All right, so we have, we have, and we laugh about it. We do, but but we we've got goofy ideas, don't we? We have goofy ways that we find God's will, and we think that it is God's will. Okay, it's one of the things that happens is we change our guidelines to fit our needs a lot of times, you know. Uh, well, Lord, he didn't come at 11 o'clock today to buy his 7-Up, but if he does tomorrow, you know, and, and we just keep right on until we get what we want. It's not necessarily what God's will is, but it's what we want. And what we determine. It's funny, the Apostle Paul never tells the believer to find the will of God. He never does that. He assumes that the believer is going to do the will of God. Okay, and so there's some things about why he assumes that. The will of God does not come in a moment of revelation, but it comes from a lifestyle of renewal. And it comes from a reforming of the mind that will align to God's word and therefore to God's will. Okay? 
and it'll be easier to find what God's will is. Let me give you something else here. Now, y'all ain't going to like this at all, okay? In Scripture, if we were to study it, there's more examples of God's will than we would ever be willing to follow, okay? Things that we know for sure is God's will. Let me just give you some of them. I want you to hold your place there where you're at, and I want you to go to Ephesians 5 with me, just a second. Ephesians 5. And if you get there before I do, you just hang on. Ephesians 5. Oh, my page is doing a turn. Ephesians 5. Here we go. Verse 17. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Okay, so it starts out right there. I'm getting ready to tell you what the will of the Lord is. He tells you, as if we're not going to go down through here, you just trust me, it's there, you can read it. He tells you to have a song in your heart unto the Lord. He tells you to submit yourselves one to another. He tells the wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband. He tells the husband, love your wife with a fervent love. He tells the, the children to obey their parents. He tells the fathers to love and raise your children in the admiration of the Lord. And so you're to guide them and, and direct them. He tells the employees, employees, work with diligence for your uh, employer. He tells the employers, employ your, your folks with honesty and fairness. These are all part of the will of God. We see it right there in the text. It's part of the will of God. Let me give you a few other places, and, and you can go back to Romans if you would like now, Romans 12. But let me give you a few other things. It's not God's will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. If you're not married, it's not God's will that you should be unequally yoked with non-believers. Let me give you an example of that. Y'all will like this. Y'all know I kind of like folklore, right? Okay, I kind of like folklore. All right. Y'all like it better. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Christ. 
And if he's not, if he's not a spiritual giant, if he's a spiritual Minnie Mouse, how's he going to lead you godly? Guys, find you a girl that has a heart for Jesus. And she's got a heart for Jesus. She'll have a heart for you and to follow you and y'all can serve God together and your life will be something. You may never be millionaires, but your life will be something. Amen. And it'll be, it'll be valuable for what you spend it on. Okay? Right. So it says, don't be an unequal with not believers. Now, that's one of the things that... <laughs> I hear you, brother. <laughs> I'm going to have a session on just that, but I'm just going to invite the men. <laughs> All right. All right. So here, here's some other things uh, that, that we know is the will of God. 1 Thessalonians 4, 3 says this, For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, so that is your growing in Christ, that you should abstain from fornication. Oh, me. That's not popular, but see, that's, that's the world's mindset. It's not God's will that you commit adultery. It's not God's will that you lie, steal, gossip, backbite, cause a ruckus in the church or in your home or at work, covet, fall away, have other gods, love money. And the list goes on and on. These are things that we know for sure that is God's will. And we could just spend all day just talking about what the Bible says is God's will. And if we'll just do them, we'll be a lot better off. Now, I'm going somewhere with that, so you just hang on. You just hang on. It is God's will that your joy remain and that it be full and mature. I just read that in my devotions this morning in John 15. How does that happen, folks? Somebody tell me. How does how do I how does my joy remain and it's full according to John 15? And yeah, to abide in him. To abide in him. What does that mean? I continue in him. I stay in him. I get my resources from him. When I do that, my joy will remain and be full. Now, let me tell you something. And I'm just going to bust your bubble right now. It didn't say your happiness was going to be full. My friend Jonathan Romaine, we, we've talked about this. I've got to be careful with what I say here. But his, he's going through a rough time with his child right now. Okay? And he poured his heart out to me the other day. I mean, he did. And I'm telling you, his happiness ain't full right now. All right, his happiness. We don't know what we're going to go through in this life. It's not just all rose petals, man. There's some thorns in them bushes too, okay? So it's not about your happiness. It's about your joy remaining, all right? So the first thing that we need to understand before I, I got 15 minutes, so y'all just, we're going to run fast. But the first thing we need to understand is there's several different terms or types of God's will. Okay, that's the first thing. There's the sovereign will of God. That is what he has decreed that won't change. Salvation is that way. Okay. What do you mean? There's one way to heaven, and that's through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. That is the decreed sovereign will of God. Buddha can't take you there. Harry Christian can't take you there. Your good works can't take you there. The Baptist church can't take you there. Baptism can't take you there. Okay? Jesus Christ and his finished work on the cross is it. That's one of God's sovereign wills. He has a perfect will, and that's what we that's what we want. I mean, that's what everybody says. I feel the same. That's what's messed up. I'm gonna miss step. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mess up God's perfect will. Well, we probably all have already. All right. The best way you can tell God's perfect will is to look in the rearview mirror. 
You, 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 can't, you can't see it in front of you more times than not. We don't know what this person, he does. He's got a perfect week. He says, you, I, have, I have plans and thoughts for you that it will be well with you. Okay? So he has a perfect week. I'm going to tell you the best way we can find it in this minute. We'll come back to that. He has a promiscuous week. Okay? That is what he permits. And he stops and helps them up. They talked about evil, if I'm not mistaken, in one of the classes or in one of the lessons this past week. They talked about why there's bad things that happen. Why there's bad things that happen is God allowed his creatures to have a free will in certain things. And a bad person has a free will to do bad things. And when a bad person does bad things, it affects other people. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. Okay, it's a promiscuous week. Matter of fact, God gives you a, a will as well. Some of you ain't going to like this because I'm Calvinist, but I'm Armenian too. I'm right here. I'm, I, I, I like to be Bible. How's that? You've got the will, but you can say, no, I don't want God to forgive. I just go right on about my business. Okay. I believe that's all the heart. And we can talk about it all day long, and I can I can theorize and theologianize, and I can I can mesmerize and hypnotize with the best of them. I guarantee you. I've been heard all the arguments. I've, I've argued all the arguments. But but the Bible talks about God's sovereignty, and the Bible talks about man has a volition. What an evil God it would be if he programmed one person to be saved and one to go to hell with. That'd be bad. Now you deal with that tension all you want to. I don't know how to deal with it. I'm just telling you they're both bad. Okay? They're both bad. Alright. So he has a promiscuous will. He has a moral will. That's what we talked about up there. The Ten Commandments is part of the moral will. The, the things that come down to what's morally right and morally wrong. God wants what's morally right done. Okay? Then he has a specific will. And that's where we want to get to. Specific will. I have two good options. Okay? Which one do I pick? I want to do God's perfect will. Which one do I pick? Out of the two good options. Which one? So that, that's what we want to talk about right now. We, will, we want to talk about how to make a decision, and I'm not going to answer all your questions, but how to make a decision between two good options. I told part of this story Thursday night uh, when we were doing our presentation for Salvation. My oldest granddaughter, as y'all probably all know, my granddaughters have stayed with me this week, and Papa looked after them, spoiled them, didn't give them no sugar till Thursday evening, <laughs> and didn't give them all the caffeine, sugar, and cake, and pies they wanted, shook them up, sent them home. All right? But, <laughs> but my oldest granddaughter asked me what she should do with her life. Now, it was funny because I, my oldest granddaughter, I think, is going into the third grade. My youngest granddaughter is going into the first grade, and they both were talking about what they should do with their life. And I know that didn't come from their father because my son don't believe that you ought to have to make that decision until you get older, okay? So it came from somewhere else, some other influence. So she asked me, she said, should I be a teacher? I like teachers. I like. I think teachers are good. Teachers teach people stuff. I'd like to be a journalist. I'd like to travel around and write about the places I go to and, and write a book and maybe teach too. 
What about astronomy? I, I'd, li I'd like to study the stars. I'd like to be somebody that travels. Maybe I ought to just be a mama. I think mamas is good. Okay, now this, this is my little granddaughter. Okay. And, and she's asking me all these questions. And she's looking for Papa to be able to answer her question. Okay? She was serious. So I pointed out to her, I said, all of these things, honey, could be good. Any one of them. A teacher. A mom. And I mean, I, I, any of it. Any of it could be good. But I told her. I said, as you pursue these things, you ought to talk to people that do these things. So in other words, get your teacher. In. And there's one particular teacher I know there at her school that I think very highly of. I had her as a, as a teacher. She's younger than I am, but I had her as a teacher in college. And, man, she's incredible. And I said, y'all ought to just you know, ask your teacher about the good and the bad about being a teacher. Because you got to study at night, you got to do all this stuff. It's not just work six hours during the day. You got a lot of other stuff to do, you know. And uh, I told her, I said, find out what the job, what it takes to do the job. And if you can, maybe try one of them out. And I said, honey, as young as you are, try as many different things as you can, even things that you might not think you're interested in. Try your hand. Ask God to take your heart and your desire and mesh that with His will. And as you do that, He opens doors and He gives you a desire to do these things. And He knows how to mold you on what's best for you and for His work. We have a young lady here at our church. And, and I asked her, I went to her this morning, I asked her that I use her for an example at this particular point. And that's Lynn. Lynn does a good job singing. She, uh, she does a good job playing. We watched her mature here at this church. She came to me back at the beginning of the summer. And she said, Marty, could, could you help me find something I could volunteer my time? Some kind of ministry, just something. And so I went and I, went and talked to several different people. And this opportunity came at First Baptist for her to actually work under some people that have been trained to train her. And you see, she's given her, she given her, her summer to the Lord. She says, you know, here, here you go. I, I, I'll, I'll, Go up here and I'll work at the soup kitchen. I'll, I'll go over here and do this. I'll work with the kids. I'll, I'll do whatever. I'll sing at the, the restaurant. I'll do whatever. And God opens the door. Now, will Lynn be some famous singer? I don't know. I have no idea what God's plan is. But I can tell you that she has given this summer to the Lord. And as she continues to do that, he will continue to open the door and guide her to that. And he'll do the same for you. You want to preach? God will open the door. I'll open the door for you. Okay? I will. You want to serve God? We'll find a place for you to serve God. You want to teach? Whatever it is, we, we will help you find that and to try that. Just because you try it don't mean that's what you got to do. You understand? It means I'm, I'm testing the waters. I'm sticking my big toe in before I jump in. Alright? Alright. Look with me, if you would, in Romans. We're going to get to the Bible now. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. 
and be not conformed unto this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Go back to, I beseech you, therefore. Paul is talking about everything, and we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, but he's talking about everything that went on before this. Chapters 1 through 4, condemnation for every human being. Chapter 5 through 8, salvation available for all human beings. Okay? Chapter 9 through 11, election for Israel. God, what he has said, will come about. Okay? Verse 1, I crawl up on the altar. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable worship. I crawl up on that altar every day, and I offer my entire being. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. I, I bring my desires. I bring my emotions. I bring the talents that I have. I bring the gifts that I have. I bring my money. I bring my failures, my fears, the successes, and I give it all to God. I say, Lord, here I am. Everything about me is yours, and I'm a living sacrifice because you died for me. And out of the gratitude of my heart, I give myself to God. That's the first step to finding God's will. The very first step. I give all of myself to you because you give all to me. And that's the least I can do. It's all I got. I stand here at the foot of the altar with empty hands. But I'm giving myself back to you. Whatever life I have. It's the first step to finding the will of God. The very first step. Look with me, if you would. My heart's full of gratif uh, gratitude for the salvation that God provided for me. It's God's will that I die to myself daily, Jesus talks about that, and take up my cross and follow him as he leads me. God didn't give me a road map to my whole life. He don't let me look into next month or next week. And I'm glad. Today carries enough burden without having to deal with what's going to happen next week. I guarantee you if some of us could look into next year, we wouldn't get out of the bed the rest of the year. Okay? He promises if I will take up my cross and follow him, he says my yoke is light. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. He didn't promise me that I would be wealthy, healthy, popular, successful, or anything else by the word world standards. But he says, follow me and I'll be your joy. Follow me. And I'll be your joy. There's three approaches uh, to happiness uh, according to the world. There's me only. It's all about me. You pull it out in front of me, I'm going to rub you. I'm going to move on. It's all about me. I, I, I'm going to fulfill me. 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 What we're taught. What we're taught. Me, 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 me. The Bible teaches us them, 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 them. <laughs> uh, it does. Them, 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 them. Not, not me. <laughs> okay. The second thing that this world teaches us now is I think with my feelings. I think about what I just said. I think with my feelings. How'd that feel to you? What did you get out of service? How'd, how'd it feel? Yeah. Right? Wasn't, 
What do you think about that crazy pastor? What do you think about what he said? It's how do you feel about what he said? How do you feel about the news? How do you feel? It's all about feeling. The third thing is I'm a victim. Lord, if that's not where we live at today, I don't know where we live. I mean, I'm a victim. Everybody's a victim. Right? There's a guy that his name's uh, Michael Ramsey. You ought to go look him up. He's a Christian apologist. And he's got a whole thing on just being a victim. But it's it's what we that's that's what we are. I live in the past, some event in my past. Listen to me. Christ died for you and he redeemed you from your past. He didn't tell you to live in your past and let your past identify you. Man, I've been run over, stepped on, looked over, passed over for promotions, passed over for this and that and other. I went to a, a college where they would crop me out of the blame pictures because I was too old to represent them. I am old. <laughs> I was the first generation after Noah. <laughs> but I'm telling you, man, you know, we can't we can't feel victimized all the time. Christ died for that. You know, if I let my brother in law come up here and say this, he'd tell you this right now. Pull your boots up. Okay? And I mean that's exactly what that's Pull your boots up. Because God has got a place for us to go. Not some in the past where we're all living. Yeah. Oh, man. As you do this, I want you to look with me. I've got to hurry because I'm, I'm done with time. But Look with me, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, so in other words, out of gratitude, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, not a dead sacrifice, but a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable worship. Okay, that's what the word service there means, worship. And don't you be conformed. Don't you be pressed into the world's mold. The world's got a mold. Don't be pressed into their mold, but be transformed metamorphosed, we talked about it last week, metamorphosed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that good, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So here it is, folks. As you allow God to transform your mind through his word, as you allow him to change your thinking, because his thinking is counterculture, I guarantee it. I mean, we talked about all the things, you know, lying and backbiting and, and all of this other stuff, and that's just not of the world. Submit to anybody? Are you kidding? You've got to be kidding. We're in the 21st century. Who's going to submit to somebody, right? But it's, it's counterculture. What God says is counterculture. But he says, if, if you will let me renew your mind by my word and give you a new way of thinking when it is against what the world has to say, if you'll do that, I will help you prove, that's to test, what is good and acceptable. So I'm going to test, I'm going to determine, and I'm going to weigh out what is the will of God, his perfect will which is mature. What is his perfect will? So when I come to that crossroads in the road and there's two choices and both of them seem good as I have walked with God I have prayed that's one of the things people keep telling me you know they'll, they'll say well I don't know what to do with my son and I said well, I don't know what you're praying about prayer life is going to help you understand which one of these two is God's will. Okay. 
you're a healthy way to have a fighting person. If you submit yourself to him and walk with him and stay in his word, And we need all of those things. And God wants you to be right there. That's what that is what the Great Commission is. As you are going through life, be a witness to me. He says, if you just submit yourself to me, I'll bring a good and I'll get the sign. sovereign will of God and it comes down to his method of salvation there's only one way it's only through Jesus Christ and that is what God designed and the very first thing you've got to do before you can crawl up on that altar of God is you have to come to a place where you submit yourself to him and say I am a sinner and I need salvation and when you do that then you can offer yourself up in gratitude to him and say, Lord, take my life and make me what you want me to be. And you'll have fulfillment, I guarantee it. Won't you come this morning? If you don't know Jesus Christ today, won't you come and get saved and then offer him your life? Won't you come this morning? Christian, if you haven't never, ever offered yourself to God, won't you come today and offer yourself to me and say, do with me what you want to do. Won't you come this morning? Won't you come? The Savior is waiting. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord God, we want to thank you for this day. Father, I thank you so much. This is Pastor Marty Granger here at Cedar Grove, and we just want to thank you for tuning in with us this Sunday uh, and spending your Sunday morning worshiping with us here. It means so very much to us as we see people tune in week after week. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9, that if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Today, as we went through the service, as you worshiped with us, if you feel like God's dealing with your heart on the fact that you're not saved and you need to make a decision uh, for him. We'd love to help you in that process. It's a simple process. You just got to agree with God. And that is that you're a sinner and you're in need of a Savior. If you'll call upon him, he will save you. The Holy Spirit's dealt with your heart and you're a Christian and you need to make some decisions. We'd encourage you to do that as well. Now, again, we've enjoyed you being with us this Sunday and we look forward to worshiping with you again at the midweek and next Sunday as well. In the meantime, if you need to contact us, that information will be made available. May God richly bless you, and we look forward to seeing you at the next appointed time.